it's late, and I'm here to talk about Fright Night 2011, the story of a suburban teenage boy who has a vampire moving next door, which is a remake of a 1980s film of the same name and of the same premise. And, you know, I went into this thinking it'd be a couple laughs, a couple kills, and you go home and forget about it. You know, I thought it'd be, like, enjoyable, but kind of a throwaway. Or, you know, just watchable, passing the time entertainment. But I gotta say, I, I really enjoyed this remake of Fright Night. And, you know, that's... I've heard a lot of good about it, but I also, um, just, actually just last night, after I watched the movie, I watched, uh, Rambo Raff's rant on it, and I think he was kind of harsh on it, and I think some of the points he made were, like, kind of, I don't know if I would agree with it, like, I think it's going a little over the top and too far, but, I mean... (laughs) This is it's it's more substantial of a horror film than I thought it would be going in. And I'll say I mean I think a lot of um the problems that Rambo Raff had with Fright Night is how it held up, how it stacked up against the original. Which is totally understandable. That's how I uh would review Nightmare on Elm Street. That's how I did review Nightmare on Elm Street in a written review. I was just like I totally compared it to the original throughout. And that's why I hate Rob Zombie's Halloween. And especially Halloween 2. But let's say I I just saw Rob Zombie's Halloween. I didn't know anything of the franchise. I probably would enjoy it. I hate to admit. (laughs) And that's the thing with this. is I've seen the original Fright Night. And Fright Night 2. But fuck if I can remember them, man. Very vaguely. All I remember is the pilot's the kid. He had the, the the next door neighbor was a fucking was a uh, vampire. Like I very vaguely remember it like that. And I think he does like seek help from like a vampire slayer that's on TV or something. But I don't remember it. That's like all I remember of that. So I kind of went into this like with a blank slate, not looking at it as a remake. Just looking at it as like a horror movie or a horror comedy or whatever. And granted, it's not without its faults, okay? Uh, There's a few things with it that I think are kind of off. The biggest one to me is Anton Yelkin, or Yelchin, whatever his name is, the kid right there, who's been in a lot of flicks. He's been in a lot of flicks. I can't really think of one off the top of my head. Uh, I think I could think of one, but no one would know what it is. Hearts in Atlantis. I don't know if he was even in that, though. I think he was. He's been in a lot of f- flicks, but he's the main character. He's your hero. Right? And he's this high school kid who, I'm thinking when he was in grade school, was a total nerd. And he hung out with, uh, what's his name? Uh, I can't think of his name. It's something Plass. Christopher Christopher Mintz Plass, I think his name is. Uh, McLovin from Superbad. He used to hang out with him, and uh, they are total dweebs, you know. And then when he got to high school, he's, like, trying to reinvent himself and be one of the cool kids, right? Which is already, like, that doesn't make him unlikable. That's totally understandable for his character, but it's the way he carries himself about it that's kind of... Like, his friend wants to talk to him. He's like, oh, do we have to talk in public? And, you know, his old friend, McLovin, and totally dismisses his old friend. And then when one of their old friends goes missing, McLovin drags him to his house. And McLovin's like, dude, you act like you don't even care that he's missing. Like, what happened to you, man? We used to be inseparable. And, like, out of nowhere, Anton Yelchin, Yelkin, whatever, he's, like, just a total dick about it. He's like... Well, 
my life has gotten so much better since you know like you know when my life started getting better when I stopped fucking hanging out with you guys and I grew up and why don't you guys grow up and I was just like dude you are the dick in this movie I did not like him from the start and I think it was Rambo Raff said in his review and I would agree with this like I felt the same way that McLovin should have been the main character he's more likable he's like the nerd that gets picked on and shit um, or they could have just made Anton Yelkin more nerdy like he's trying to be cool like these other kids but still nerdy at heart and still not dick to his friend I think that's a major misstep when you had a character who is essentially a likable kid and just make him be a dick right off the bat it gives you a bad first taste that was a misstep I thought uh, another thing is this is like a horror comedy but the comedy, it's just, it's not that funny. It really isn't that funny. Another thing that's odd, too, is, like, right away, you know that Colin Farrell is a vampire. Like, they don't make it a thing out of figuring out that it's him. At the same time, though, I don't really hold it that much against the movie because you know going in that he's the vampire. So big fucking deal that they didn't beat around the bush. <clears throat> but, you know... I said that the the comedy is not that funny, but the horror, like I said, the horror surprised me in this. I thought it was more substantial. It was pretty fucking hardcore. And the movie kept kind of getting better, I thought, as it went along, and, and more entertaining, more violent. And Like, there's a part halfway through where Colin Farrell gets stabbed with a stake, and I'm like, damn, that movie seemed really short, you know? Like, it was pretty good, but that was, like, short. And then there was like a whole another half hour where uh, I thought it kept getting more exciting. They have the whole montage where he's like, I'm going to go kill a vampire. And he's fucking stocking up all his weapons and shit. Like, I thought that shit was cool. Sue me. And I don't know. I thought that the they made good use of the setting, which is like a Vegas suburb where everyone's kind of moving out. Probably because they can't afford their housing or whatever that they got. And just, like, the way Vegas looks... Like, it had good cinematography. This is a good-looking film, I thought. Like, I remember one shot where uh, Anton Yelkin's going down an elevator, like, on the strip, and it's, like, sunset on Vegas, and it looked... It just looked cool. And I just liked this, this setting, like, this, like, you know, subdivision or whatever in Vegas that's, like, mostly abandoned. Most people are moving out, and that's where Colin, for real fucking moves in another thing I liked about it was Colin Farrell um, I, he seemed to really be relishing the role and he was good at it like he seemed like he was having a blast like he just wanted to play a bad guy vampire forever you know he just seemed like he did the job he had the charisma he, had, he was menacing A Rebel Raff said in his review, <laughs> he said a couple of things. Like he's saying, like, "Oh, this is a Twilight fucking vampire," which I'm just like, I don't know, because he has pale skin. It's like, well, vampires have pale skin usually, um, and you know he's like a good-looking guy. And or what was it like? He said. That his buddy Effrey thought that uh, it seemed like you didn't know whether he, this guy wanted to fucking kill the person or fuck him. Which is funny. I mean, that's a funny observation. But, I mean, that's kind of like vampires. They're supposed to have some sexual appeal, right? Like there's something alluring about uh, the vampires. Um, I don't think it's like I haven't seen the Twilight movies, but I imagine that this movie is a lot more hardcore and Colin fucking Farrell is like a lot more hardcore of a vampire than the Twilight movies. Maybe I'm wrong. I haven't seen them. I don't know. But anyways, just it was I thought a pretty good horror movie. Like as it went along, yeah, it had its faults, and yeah, it's kind of corny. But some of the corniness that kind of recalls like '80s horror movies. And I'm sorry, for all I know, the original 
Fright Night is a ton better. I don't know. I'll watch them again, but I just don't remember them. So I'm not constantly like putting this new one against the original. I'm just putting this up as, you know, is this an entertaining horror movie or horror comedy in general? And I thought it was. The comedy hit or miss, but the horror was good. And it kept kind of ramping things up. Like, you know, you'll see fucking, you know, people locked away. They're slowly getting drained of their blood. And there's a little cool little twist they put on that with the vampires. Um, there's like a tomb full of them. A crazy chase scene. Big showdown. It was fun, man. It's fun for what it is. I accepted it for what it is and I had a fun time. And I thought Colin Farrell was good. The rest of the cast I thought was generally good. I would like to see... Uh, I don't want to spoil anything, but... But I thought, you know, McLovin was good. Tony Collette as the mom was good. I thought they were. I thought they all did a good job. Colin Farrell probably stood out the most. Um, like I said, I liked the setting. I liked the look of the movie. I liked the way, like... I liked the violence. There was CGI and stuff, but I thought it looked generally good. I thought the vampires, when they go in the full vampire creature mode, they're using a CGI, but I thought they looked fucking scary as fuck. Convincing enough. The big wide ass mouse with the fucking rat teeth and shit. And it was just, it was a fun ride. It was a, what, how long is it? 106 minutes. It was fun. I thought it, you know, it was better than I expected out of it. Uh, my co-host on Movie Dudes gave it high marks, said it was a really good movie, but, you know, I kind of was going into it just with a completely open mind, and it entertained me. I had a good time with it. Um, I don't know. I just thought it was, what the fuck? I've been rambling on. It's just... It has some good scenes. The one thing I didn't really care for, and this is something that people thought was a strong point, was this vampire slayer guy that works in Vegas that Anton Yelkin goes in for, goes to for help. Which, one, it doesn't make sense to me. Why would you go to a TV vampire slayer guy or, you know, Vegas show vampire slayer guy? Like, that guy doesn't know shit. Come on. You know better than that. And apparently he does know shit in this, but it's just stupid. It's played by David Tennant, who I think is from Doctor Who. I remember people telling me he was a big deal. I didn't find his character interesting or that good at all. Uh, I really didn't. I was just like, whatever. And uh, I was, I thought the same thing as Rambo Raff did about, uh, about uh, David Tennant's character, which is like a slightly less annoying Russell Brandt, which is exactly what he comes off as. Uh, just, I didn't like his character. I really didn't. But, I mean, overall, I had fun with, you know, the horror scenes and shit. And the, it does a good job of tension. Like, there's a part where the kid breaks into his house and Colin Farrell comes home and he has to try to sneak out of the house and save the girl. Like, that was really well done. I thought the showdown and stuff at the end and the build up to it was well done. This is like a solid fucking rental, I say. It's and it's you know for just a popcorn you know horror vampire movie it was good. It's no fucking let me in or let the right one in or anything like that. But I guarantee I have not seen the Twilight films. I guarantee this is a step above Twilight. So I'm going to give it a fucking rock solid 3 out of 5. No apologies. Um, I had fun with it. What can I say? It wasn't bad, man. It really isn't that bad. Uh, if you're one of these people that holds the original in high regard, then, you know, go in with some reservations. But just try to put away the original and just look at this for what it is. I think it's a fun ride. I think you'll get your money's worth. So anyways, that's it for now. Later. Thanks for watching. All that jazz.